Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about something you might have never heard of before, which is the concept of a capsule kitchen. Now you've probably heard of a capsule wardrobe. This idea originated in the 70s when boutique owner Susie Faux coined it as a way of having a wardrobe full of clothes that could be worn year round and not go out of style. So a timeless or a capsule wardrobe. This solved a problem of spending too much money on too many clothes that weren't ideal. And this concept has evolved over the years. A capsule wardrobe has become an effective way to expand a number of outfits while limiting the number of items. But why stop at a wardrobe? The same principles could be applied to the kitchen, an area of the home that often becomes overwhelmed with gadgets, utensils, and ingredients that we hardly use. A capsule kitchen is a concept that could simplify meal prep, reduce decision fatigue, and keep your kitchen clutter free, which is what we're all here for, right? I'll share some of the things that I currently use and some cool things that I've seen other people use. And if you're curious about any of them, I'm gonna try my best to leave the links down in the description along with any discount codes if there are any. So a little bit of planning and prep before we dive in. First of all, identify your own essentials. Every kitchen is as unique as the cook, right? Our diets, our lifestyles, our cooking habits, and our home layouts vary widely. So it's crucial to start by assessing your own cooking habits. What dishes do you and your family prepare most frequently? What tools do you actually use every day? The goal is to identify your personal and your family's essentials and regularly used items. Number two, declutter ruthlessly. This includes duplicate items that you don't need or rarely used gadgets, expired or seldom used ingredients. We just wanna get the definite no's out of the way. And then finally, consider meal planning. So you don't have to go all out and pull out the chart and all that good stuff if you're not into meal planning, but it is important for maintaining a capsule kitchen to know what ingredients and staples you're gonna to wanna to have on deck. Now, unlike a capsule wardrobe, a capsule kitchen works best with low level organization. So we're gonna be working with sub capsules within your capsule kitchen, as opposed to a capsule wardrobe, which is an entire wardrobe. Maybe you have your pants separate from the shirts, but overall it's like in one spot. In the kitchen, you're gonna have a bunch of low level sub capsules for each section of the kitchen to make sure that there's an organized home for each item kept. And to make this easier, we're gonna be breaking these sections down by cookware, tools, dinnerware, fabrics, and edibles. So let's start with cookware. A frying pan is probably the most versatile cookware that you're gonna own. One large frying pan will cover most of your basic cooking needs but make sure that the pan you choose can perform all of its functions without overheating or damaging. Some pans like those with Teflon can't withstand blackening or searing temperatures. I would only have one such pan, but I'm from Texas, so a cast iron skillet to blacken and scrape and deep fry when I occasionally do that is one additional pan that I pretty much always have in my cabinet. They are rugged, you can scrape them up, and they just keep delivering. But they do take more maintenance, so I try to only pull it out when I really need it, which is honestly not that often. Now, if we're talking essentials, all you really need are two saucepans, two pots. One small for sauces and maybe a side vegetable, and a large one for things like soups and pastas, something that isn't gonna overflow when you need to cook the big, bulky things. Though, if I'm being honest, my Instant Pot gets most of the glory for soups. The Instant Pot is quite the versatile tool on its own. We use ours for probably more than half of our meals. It's low maintenance, it's less messy, and the longer you forget about it, the better the food. Now, a capsule kitchen, like I said earlier, relies heavily on organization. And this is where brands like Caraway really excel. They go above and beyond to give every single item a specific home for you. So you don't have the option to make a mistake and like jumble it on a drawer. No, it's got a specific home already planned. In fact, I've had more people asking where I got my pan and lid organizers than the pans themselves. You can only get them through Caraway and only when you have their pots and pans. You can't even find a knockoff of these types of organizers. Believe me, I've looked, they don't exist. This would be a great place for a Caraway sponsor mentioned, but this isn't a sponsored video. So enjoy this ad-free experience. Now, some handleless saucepans are also great for things like nesting, which can be great for organizing and saving space. 
Though if you have higher quality materials or you have some non-scratch materials, you can do damage by nesting and stacking them together. That's why most pans and pots that have the handles are better not trying to nest them. They weren't intended to be nested and that just scratches the bottom of them. If you're considering a capsule kitchen, quality is gonna be a factor because you don't wanna create these beautifully organized subsections and then have one piece of it fall to ruin and then you're forced to find a replacement that may or may not fit with your current organized system. These mismatches and frequent replacements are often what lead to the pan jungle in the cabinet. And versatility is the name of the game when it comes to considering capsules. So. The pan that can work on any type of stove burner and be used in the oven or as a serving dish or as a storage container, all of those multifunctional versatile dishes are gonna be a win. We inherited some storage and cook dishes from Matt's grandmother and they can serve all of those functions. And so it's a great addition if we're going to have storage containers anyway, that they're able to serve multiple functions. It's more convenient to have a one pan that can be used for 90% of your cooking needs than to have a specific pan that's for each individual type of food. I personally love the size and sturdiness of my caraway pans. And so aside from the occasional use of my cast iron skillet, I don't find myself needing any more than the one large frying pan, the two saucepans, and the one Dutch oven. So let's talk about tools. While knives come in bulk sets and they can be so easy to collect, you really only need a few. I personally tend to like 90% of my knife needs with a chef's knife that I've owned for over a decade now. If I'm being honest, I rarely use the carver knife or the bread knife, although it has come in handy when we've made our own bread at home. A good chunky cutting board is another versatile tool that you can really get away with owning one of, especially if you use inserts to swap between foods. Even without inserts though, there are two sides to the cutting board, which works for most meals. If you're using one side for meats and the other for produce. Our cutting board was gifted by our realtor when we bought this condo and I leave it out on the counter because it adds some warmth to the space and I use it to cover the side of the fridge. A colander and mixing bowls are generally must haves for anyone who cooks. It's easy to bury yourself in cooking utensils though, which is probably the bane of most kitchens. This is where it can be challenging when you're trying to curate a capsule kitchen. They're oddly shaped. They can almost look cluttered no matter what you do. Not to mention they generally come in these outrageously large bundles like it's a lot. <laughs> Our set was so large that we ended up donating half of it right after purchasing it. And again, this is where small organization and having a keen eye for quality can make all the difference. This is where, yet again, Caraway absolutely excels. They're killing it. They have a specific place for every single utensil. They even have it carved out of the wood, which I think is so gorgeous. It's so pretty that you can actually leave it out on the counter. I have absolutely studied for any other options similar to this level of capsule utensils, and I have found none. If you're in a position where you need to start fresh and you just wanna have a spot already made for you for everything, Caraway is great at providing a very specific home for all of their objects. There are some other nice organizing options. I don't love the ones that I've seen that use plastic though. There's some really nice ones that are nested, but I will never use plastic again because my experience is that they all eventually melt. But really, as long as you have some sort of sub organization going on with essential versatile tools, you can build an effective capsule. Now, when it comes to appliances, as long as you limit yourself to whatever appliances are key for you and that you have a specific spot for, you should be okay. For us, that consists of a blender, a toaster, a waffle maker, an instant pot, and a coffee maker. Ideally, these are appliances that you use frequently and or that can perform multiple functions. Selecting capsule dinnerware can be the most fun. There are so many options and there's not much work in curating since they typically come in sets. So this is where your personalized capsule theme can really shine through. Swirls, stones, colors, simplistic, you choose. The important part is that you do choose. Don't just keep it all, right? Choose a set of plates, bowls, and cutlery that fits with your household, plus a few extra for guests. I think that a good rule of thumb for a capsule is to avoid more than double your household size. So if you're a family of four, then eight, plates, mugs, bowls should do the trick. If you're a family of six, you might need 12. There are no set across the board rules. I just think that that's a good guideline to start with. Fabrics offer another opportunity to personalize your kitchen with your own style and color scheme. I think it's best to select durable, effective, 
fabrics when you're talking about washcloths and oven mitts and all of that stuff. I personally don't use any linens, table linens, placemats or anything like that. Some people prefer using thin reused cloth scraps and other people prefer the thick patterned fabrics. Really the important thing is the method of containment and the ease of access. So as long as you have some kind of spatial constraint, which I talk about all the time, and it has like a specific home that's convenient and it's filling your needs, then that's the important thing. Keep it in a capsule. And then we have the edibles. Spices play a huge role in a capsule kitchen and in a cluttered kitchen on the other end of the spectrum. The goal for spices in a capsule kitchen is to bundle them into a cohesive organized unit, just like everything else. This can be challenging given that spices often come in different sizes, shapes, and colors, which is why uniform spice containers and organization is so popular and tends to be really beneficial. I recommend using jars with labels that come with blank options for the one-off spices for your own personal needs. We usually have like one thing that's not a typical labeled item, that you can still use a jar for, you just need to fill out your own label. But avoid using labels that you never actually use. Like if you're somebody who never uses dill weed, then there's no sense in having a jar with a label for dill weed that you're never gonna use. You might as well use that more effectively for something that you do use more frequently. Now, of course, you don't need to limit yourself to specific meals or ingredients, but the power of staple ingredients is undeniable. They are versatile, they make it easier to maintain a cohesive kitchen, they help you to save money. So choose ingredients that are used in a variety of recipes, grains, legumes, versatile vegetables, your typical go-to seasonings and spices that you know that you and your family love. The more that you can rely on and lean on those, the easier you're gonna find it to maintain your capsule spice section and not get unwieldy and out of control where you're having to find new spots for the new seasonings that don't fit in the jarred areas. Taking this concept of a capsule wardrobe over to a capsule kitchen can help you to transform your cooking space just like it can help to transform your closet. You can have a haven of simplicity and efficiency and it just generally leads to reduced clutter because you have fewer things to manage. Your kitchen is staying more organized and clutter free. More simplified cooking because you have your essentials and the staple tools and ingredients that make it easier for you to prepare food faster. You know where things are and it can just be more enjoyable. And it leads to less decision fatigue because when you have fewer choices and fewer items to dig through, you're spending less time deciding what to use or what to cook. It could also help with cost savings because you're focusing on quality over quantity. You're having less turnover of all of these items and fewer replacements for unnecessary gadgets or ingredients that you don't really need. And of course, there's an environmental impact. A minimalist approach to your kitchen is gonna help you to reduce waste. And so there really are a ton of benefits that you could be reaping from being more intentional and planning down to the little subcapsule areas of your kitchen. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll chat with you next week. Bye.